Today we're going to show you how to build your own pair of hover shoes. Take your soldering iron and go ahead and put the positive and negative contact points to two separate wires. Then follow suit with the rocker switch. Put the positive point on the positive contact and the negative as well on the opposite. Now add some glue to the heel end of the shoe. Do the same with the tip as well. Now take your 9 volt battery, glue it to the side, and also take your switch and glue it to the side as well. Now take a third wire and solder it to the positive contact point of the rocker switch. And do the same with a fourth wire. Now solder in the first part to the back to the heel and do the same with the fourth wire to the front of the shoe. Go to your garage and find where the metal beams are located beyond the concrete. Flip the switch and you're off right after waiting 10 to 15 seconds. When this first occurs, it's best to practice by holding on to a beam above you or to have someone stabilize you on the right or left. It's very easy to fall when you are hovering. is at the fundamental level if you have a charged particle and it it moves okay so it has some velocity or speed that's all you need you need a charged particle so some sort of like an electron or something um, and you need it to move the end that's magnetism because it generates a field that other charged particles let's say I had a negatively charged particle over here might feel okay but here's the weird thing. This is actually really weird. This one won't feel anything unless it too is moving. Let's say he's moving in that way, right? So you need one charged particle moving, and, and it will affect all other charged particles that, that are moving. So what do you think happens if you have a neutron? No matter how fast it goes, it's never going to feel a force. So only charged particles can feel this, and only if they're moving. Now, here's the weirdest thing about it. Ready for this? Let's say that I have a charged particle zipping by me, whoosh, and I'm, I'm another charged particle just kind of wiggling back and forth. I'm moving, right? So I should feel something. I'm wiggling back and forth, do, 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 do. And I say, hey, I feel something. Well, what about the person who gets in a car and drives at the same exact speed as the charged particle? With me on this? They're just driving. To, to them, it looks like I'm actually moving backwards, right? Just like when you're driving in a car, trees look like they're moving backwards, right? But what if, what would they say about the charged particle? Wouldn't it seem to them as though it was sitting right next to them the whole time? It, it depends on who's looking at it. I might say, hey, the charged particle's moving. I feel a magnetic force. Someone else might say, what are you talking about? It's not moving. You're moving. There is no magnetic force. It's freaking weird. Let's go microscopically. Let's take a bar magnet. North, south. It's just sitting there on the table. Does it have a magnetic field? Is it moving? Yeah. Weird, right? Yeah. Where's the motion? Tiny little atoms with electrons whizzing around. Electrons are charged. They're moving in circles. Boom! Magnet. The issue about a, a material, all materials have electrons. You might think that every single one of these materials in the periodic table is magnetic because they all have electrons and they're all moving, right? Yeah. But why is it that only some of them make nice magnets? Most materials look like this. Do you see how they just cancel each other? Most materials, they just totally cancel each other. This little piece of iron and this little piece of iron may not both decide to point in the same direction. How do you get them to point in the same direction? You simply expose them to a very strong magnetic field, and then they say, okay, fine, I'll line up. I'll line up too. Hey, I'll line up too. Hey, I'll line up too. Hey, I'll line up too. Boom. Bar. That's how you do it.